This is gonna come as a shock to many of you, but there are guns in Fallout 3. Some are rather generic and can be found all over the wasteland. Some are unique and require you to complete a certain objective or find it in a specific location. But there are also weapons that you've gotta make for yourself. Can you beat Fallout 3 with only a dart gun? I was born, became a girl, realized quicker than most newborns that it's nerf or nothing, cracked my knuckles, and opened a book. The dart gun, as the name cleverly implies, is a dart gun, meaning it's a gun. So small guns is the main skill we're working with. Small guns is agility, so max that out. Luck gives a slight bonus to all skills as well as critical hits, intelligence for a reasonable amount of experience points per level, and the rest just sort of spread out to have an alright carry weight and durability. You don't know this yet because I haven't told you yet, but the dark gun is really a weapon for only the sneakiest of creatures, which is why it's perfect for me. I once again tried to cut off Butch's head, someone had stolen an important part of my forearm, and even using my powers as a god to restore the pit boy to my arm did not resolve the problem. Restarting the game did, but it shouldn't have taken such a drastic move to fix the problem that I might have caused myself. Here's a fun fact, I started this run before the Chinese pistol run. I thought it'd be funny to glitch through the wall, kill a random person like that guy from Hey Arnold did, and see if they'd still be alive several years later. Palmer was the perfect test subject because she'd be dead anyway. As she pummeled me, I had an idea for another video, a Fallout 3 suicide speed run. See how quickly you can die. Before returning back to my original path, I left everyone a replacement cake for the one the synth destroyed, phased through the wall, shot the bug, picked small guns, medicine, and sneak as my tag skills, and checked on old lady Palmer. She is still dead, so it's not a total flop, but I couldn't tell if her death was on my hands or the roaches. It's entirely possible that the children didn't consume her body after I gave it to them as a gift, at my birthday party I might add. Then the overseer, so distraught over losing his mistress, covered her naked body with a vault suit and left her on the floor, where she'd spent so much of her life. That really could have happened. After threatening to shove a snow globe into a modest skull through her ear, I got the key, borrowed some ammo, made my fantastical escape, and began the quest to create a dart gun. It's got four components. A paint gun, a toy car, a single slice of surgical tubing, and a rad scorpion poison gland. Ooh, that last one's tricky. And of course, you need the blueprints for the weapon itself. Now there are three components that are not difficult to come across. Unless, of course, you're looking for them specifically. If you just play the game and loot a bunch of worthless garbage, you'll have those things in no time. But because you're on a quest for those three items, you're never gonna find them. Those same three items can all be found randomly in containers around the world. So that was my first stop. Nowhere in particular, just around Good Springs and inside someone's house. The 300 bottle caps I conjure out of really came in handy later in life. I found surgical tubing in the Brahmin's pocket belonging to Crazy Wolfgang, probably. From Moira, I got the paint gun and some Armored Vault 101 Armored Armor, as well as about 200 more caps from selling items. Two components down, two to go. Arguably the hardest of the two. One is a bitch and a half, and the other isn't that bad. The toy car is relatively easy to spot in the world. It's just a matter of finding one. After searching, almost every available building, I got my permission slip signed and ventured out to Super Duper Mart. Didn't find anything. Then I thought Tenpenny Tower. Why? Don't know. My best guess is that I figured the tower would be a useful location to have discovered after I got to the real game, which I'm still not emotionally ready for yet, and because I could loot whatever I stumbled across in my journey out there. And Dale was a mere pit stop on my way there. And wouldn't you know it, I had a plan all along. Maybe. I found a toy car in the dead kid's bedroom. It's still there because he can't play with it anymore. Only thing left to do is find a rad scorpion poison gland. I'm going to assume that you've all got your thinking grenades handy so that you can figure out for yourself why obtaining the poisonous gland of a dangerous mutated creature would be a bad thing to need to do when you can't attack anything yet. All hope, as they say, is not gone. Believe me, we haven't even gotten to the bad part of this playthrough yet. There is a place to find said poisonous gland. That permission slip I mentioned earlier was for this trip. I'm going to point lookout. Getting there, more specifically getting by the Talon Company mercs, was not a pleasant fun time having occasion in my life. All those cabs came in handy because the ticket to ride Tobar was almost 450 clams. Before we could set sail, Tobar wanted to go for a ride first. He wanted to ride the, that, uh, the little tugboat you ride across the Stick River or some shit. 
He wanted to kill them all, my point being. I'm pretty sure Tobar killed them, but I wasn't really paying attention. There's a specific location I'm after in Point Lookout. Deep in the swamp is a quaint little cabin, and in that cabin are some West Virginian mountain folk who are so engulfed in incest that one of them somehow managed to be its own father. I was quite heavily assaulted by Cletus and the boys as I stormed the cabin. Cletus Jr. whacked me with a stick as I searched for the basement, which was one of them old school outdoor basements. Cletus's 3 through 7 were locked up in the basement, where I found a red scorpion gland and a bunch of ammo. Somehow, Cletus 2.0, not to be confused with Cletus II, got angry at the sight of me and lashed out at the Cletus group locked in the jail. Free from Camp Cletus, I returned to the Point Lookout Pier, bought a ticket to return to the Commonwealth, and the real meat of this muffin turned out to be going all the way to the opposite of the southeast corner of the map. But the prospect of such a trek across the land was too much of a burden for me to bear that for some reason I quit the game and searched for the outer worlds on Steam. Couldn't find it, downloaded and installed, the not so epic game launcher, had to link it with Steam to continue. I don't, I don't know, something went wrong, I couldn't remember my password I guess. I never even got the account linked, I just gave up and that was a giant waste of time. Back in the game, I set off for a power station where the schematics are found and I quit the fucking game again to go back to the epic game launcher. Against all odds, I didn't even buy the game, let alone install the outer worlds. I'm still struggling to figure out why I had to do that at that exact moment, and finally returned to the game to run even more. Quite a bit of time later, in the dead of night, I found the blueprints to make the dark gun, got insanely lucky as two scavengers showed up to kill the raider that was after me, returned to crater side supply, made the dark gun, and the real game can finally begin. Now begins chapter 2 of this little tale, finding darts. I'll tell you the truth up front, it's not as easy as you'd f***ing think it is. And uh, as something happened, right, I was searching the Fallout 3 official strategy guide for something about darts. Like it was gonna say where you can find them and I was gonna say that's a lie. But then I came across something that shattered my mind into pieces smaller than when I smashed two beer bottles together in my office like three weeks ago. It reads, Archetype 4, the Phantom Darter, blah blah blah, stat stuff, then this often overlooked combination requires you to build a custom weapon, Dart Gun. This weapon cripples the legs of any foe that isn't a robot, end quote. Now, if you're a special kind of maniac like I am, your mind will have immediately went somewhere. Somewhere like, when did this guide come out? Fallout 3 came out on October 28th, 2008. But what about the guide? First thought was to look on Amazon. I see the guide and the date October 13th, 2009. Don't believe it. If I can win an argument about spy kids while drunk, I can prove that I'm right here. Have I even established what I'm trying to be right about? The point was, why are they saying a play strategy is often overlooked if the guide came out like days after the game released? Why am I even including this? It's such a f***ing waste of time. Anyway, back to the search. I looked at the beginning of the guide for a title page, but couldn't find one. This is a kid's book. Of course there's no title page. Go to the back of the book. That's when I see it. My white whale. Part of it, maybe. The skin and complete tail of my white whale. Copy right 2008, but I wasn't done yet. So I went back to Amazon, and lo and behold, the publishing date which proves my entire point. I've never felt more vindicated or slightly concerned that I just wasted a minute and a half on this complete f***ing nothing of a story. Believe it or not, it had a purpose. It was a metaphor, an allegory if you will, about my worldwide search for darts. They're supposed to be usually sold by most vendors, but they never were. I spent like half an hour scouring the world and found none. So I put the idea off for a small amount of time, like 50 days. I had no ideas, but I just hoped that the great Todd in the sky would be on my side. Forgot that the game was still in German from my last video, had to download Fallout 3 again. Nobody in Rivet City had any darts, so I went outside to fast travel somewhere and my pit boy doesn't work. It's rare for that to happen twice in one video. With it fixed, I waited about 5 or 6 days for vendors to restock. Checked Megaton, no darts. Checked Tenpenny Tower, no darts. Checked Lucky Harith, who is specifically mentioned in the Fallout wiki as frequently carrying darts. No darts were found. Checked Rivet City again, still no darts. So I tried something. I added 10 darts to Shrapnel's inventory. They were available for one cap per dart. And I came to my own conclusion.
conclusion based around not wanting to end the challenge. I'll tell you what I did, then explain why. I would console command an amount of darts into my inventory, but at a much higher cost. I added 250 to my person at the cost of 637 caps. I put a 150% markup on the darts because I'm a man of honor. Now for the reason why. I could have scavenged the wasteland and eventually found a few darts, but that would have made it closer to a pacifist run than a weapon restricted challenge. If I only attack like 8 things in the entire playthrough because ammo is so scarce, it almost ruins the point of the challenge. It's more about how restricting yourself to a specific weapon that is often overlooked makes the game harder and how bad that weapon is. Back in Diamond City, I sneakily fired a dart into Colin Moriarty's skull at Mach 3. The bartenders didn't appreciate that. It wasn't the dart that set them off, that was as quiet as a mouse falling through the sky. It was his skull exploding with the ferocity of a small scale nuclear weapon that set them off. As for the dart gun itself, it's not great. I don't think it's as bad as the Chinese pistol though. I almost feel like the dart gun is more similar to the syringer rather than the paddle ball. The dart gun in its current condition only does about 4 damage per shot, but then targets lose some amount of health per second for 8 seconds. However, it's treated as a sneak weapon, so it's got a noticeably higher chance for critical shots and those shots do more damage than they do with other weapons. Possibly. I'm pretty sure I got that right. One of the downsides is that you're firing a dart, not a bullet. You do have to take into account the time it will take to hit the target. That's not something you're used to doing in Fallout 3, so it's harder than you'd think to hit moving targets. Before leaving, I raided the pharmacy for anything useful I could find, activated a robot man to help me fight the oncoming raiders. He died? I'm not sure if he even did anything at all. I left, sold a bunch of stuff to the armory guy at the tower, sold more stuff at Rivet City, and set off for GNR Radio. The mole rats, as expected, could be knocked out with a single dart. They're very weak-minded creatures, just like the people from wherever you're from. Feral ghouls thankfully only take one or two darts to kill. Two darts, with help from a few of my Radroach cousins, took down a super mutant. Pretty impressive stuff. It can also cripple people, but something about crippling ghouls makes me think they're actually faster when crippled. It's weird. Super mutants, in general, though, are most likely tougher than you'd think. I guess that depends on how tough you thought they'd be. If you thought, no sh a dart gun's gonna do jack against the super mutant, congratulations. I'll forgive the vulgarity just this once, because you are correct. They've got a lot of health, and these minuscule attacks with damage well below double digits doesn't add up fast enough to kill them quickly. For once in my life, I did try to help to kill the behemoth, only because I wanted the XP associated with killing him. Speaking of things I've literally never done before, that's a true fact, don't bother looking it up, I decided to help 3Dog in the big pillow fight, an unfortunate event that consumed more time than current me is comfortable with. Past me, the me playing the game, had no issues with it, but current me does. I did take a fair amount of damage while going down into the mines. Despite having decent armor, only putting 4 points into endurance was a mistake. Also, fun fact about the dart gun, poison damage doesn't apply to robots, which makes them an exceptional to kill, to the point where I usually just take the cowardly retreat option. The rest of the longer than average metro was not terrible. One on one, the dart gun is perhaps a good gun, but when you're dealing with two or three or more, it's not very effective. Fights are more frantic, you're more likely to miss, it takes a second to reload and you're taking more damage, it's a cluster Out of the mines, I emerged out into a minefield, that's what this should be called anyway. The path to the independence pole thing is filled with high level mutants. A smart mitten would have ignored them all and entered the museum of freedom. Instead, I used the weapon until I drained damn near 10% from its condition. I spent somewhere around 10 darts, maybe up to the low 30s, these are big numbers we're working with here. With the location discovered, I waited for several days and made the rounds at the usual selling what I'd collected. Then, guess what? I cheated again. This time, the darts were far more expensive, 850 cabs for 200 darts. Rather than running right towards the giant rebar art piece, I ran for the building capital, just in time for Talon Company mercs to be battling state representatives of whatever state you don't like. This is the Mad Libs episode of Mitten Squad. All I had to do was clean up the scraps, a more time-consuming endeavor, and I could enter the building to keep the party alive. The Berg Club guys were easier to kill than anticipated. This isn't a bad gun, but something in almost combat armor being killed in two shots is surprising. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe this is supposed to be a gun you don't have a lot of ammo for, so you only use it to slow tough enemies down. Maybe by having tons of ammo for it, I'm defeating the entire point of the gun. That would be a little unfortunate. Towards the end of the building, I found myself facing another behemoth. There were guys with guns shooting at it, but I helped. I shot at it. I don't know that I did anything, but I tried my best. And sometimes your best, you'd be better off just doing nothing at all. I'd 
let the Power Armor boys take care of the mutants in front of the tower, rode the elevator ride, installed the dish, returned to the third dog, got information about my father, Rivet City, annoying c killed a guard just to see if I could get away with it, couldn't, and entered the Jefferson Memorial Campground to rid the mutants and find information about where James went. There is a stark difference between a super mutant and a brute. The brutes take far more shots to kill. A normie can be put to sleep in 3 to 4 shots, assuming you keep shooting him. If you land a shot and wait for the full 8 seconds, it could take fewer shots. A brute can easily take 8 or 9 or 10 or some astronomically large number. It's weird to talk negatively about this gun. It took 40 shots to get through the Jefferson Memorial and the few mutants outside. That's not bad at all, considering the cost of the ammo. But I just can't help but see this weapon as an awful piece of sh**. With the memorial cleared, my next stop was William Cassington's Automobile Emporium. Once there, I took a moment just to see what the dart actually looks like when it's fired. It's all a dream, the Matrix, communism, a magic door, dad's awake, lovely, time to tease that little bitch. First, I knocked him out, slowly, just because I can. You can tell by my voice that I'm daddy's little girl. I knew he'd never hurt me. Basically, I just wanted to see if I could lure him outside and across the wasteland. I just wanted to see how far he'd follow you. Turns out it's to the door that leads outside. Back at the marketplace, I shot a kid again. Nobody liked that, so I let them kill me. Sold items, got up to 623 cap, and upped the exchange rate once again. This time, 100 darts for 623 caps. Spoke to dad, he berated me before I even got to work. It's like walking into work with your boss and him saying, Good morning, idiot. Your feelings are hurt before the day's even begun. Anyway, I killed the scientist for that. Then I did my chores like a good lad. Some motherfucker threw a grenade at me in the dead of night while I was waiting in the sewage to take me away to heaven. Enclave soldiers, medium difficulty. If you wait between shots, it's gonna be maybe five. Sneak attacks help and can knock off half their health if you're lucky. About halfway through the Taft Tunnel, Dr. Annoying tugged on my pant leg and asked for some drugs. Apparently one of her acquaintances is having a die and I and save him. Being a good Christian boy, I gave the bitch some drugs. Then I followed her to Garza, watched him feel better, then killed him myself. Then, at the Citadel, curiosity got the better of me again. I wanted to see how high the dart will go when it's fired into the air. I slowed down time, activated the free cam, and followed it up into the sky. It got about this high by the time this had happened. Next stop, Little Lamplight. They are technically my next stop, but I decided to go on a little adventure to see how many people I can kill and not be completely shunned by the Brotherhood of Steel. It was certainly not easy. Getting a dart through reinforced steel plating is nothing short of a miracle. By the time everyone in the courtyard was dead, I'd only spent about 30 ammo on all those Brotherhood soldiers outside walking around with their training wheels on. Before getting the Vault 87 location, I made the vendor rounds again, this time for stim packs. I had a feeling the 250 darts would get me through the rest of the game. Was learned of the location, got a little lamplight, failed the skill check, and went down a fresh and unforgiving path. Not cheating my way through here with the save load exploit is big for me. Paradise Falls was where I'd find a few midget slaves. This place only reaffirmed everything I'd felt about the dark gun. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, it's easy to take a shot then sit behind cover before popping out and doing it again. But when you're dealing with enemies at so many different angles that a protractor becomes jealous, you're in for a world of hurt. Not to mention there are a multitude of named NPCs in here, and they're almost always a nightmare to kill. If they're like the combat guys. The children were rescued. I made sure to raid both the pharmacy and the armory before I left. Lots of treats in there, and after all, it's almost Halloween. And what kid wouldn't like to find steroids or a live grenade in their candy sack? The little pieces of shit let me inside. I entered Murder Pass and took it slow. I'm not sure if you can tell, but this isn't a race. The technique was alright, but ultimately was a waste of time. I used this tactic because I wanted to save my stim packs. I wasn't too concerned with ammo, but after Vault 87 and Raven Rock, there's not much you'd need stim packs for. Maybe it's because Small Guns is at 100 now, but the Brutes can go down in only 3 to 4 shots if you time them right. I took that same slow and steady technique inside the heart of Vault 87. As usual, I set Fox free to provide cover in the form of a distraction while I ignored everything 
on my way to the deck. Fox vanished right before my eyes as the Enclave harvested me, the president called off his dog, I got my stuff back, and began making my escape. No point in convincing the president to kill himself, he seemed pretty content with not even really being alive in the first place. I returned to the citadel, got the power armor, sold weapons, bought more stim packs, got my tool repaired, and with the most lethal weapon in human history, I set off with the other paladins and Liberty Prime to retake the Jefferson Memorial. Nothing worth mentioning for the most part, though I did stop off at an irradiated metro station just to see what was going on down there. Stuck one of my nerf darts to the glowing one's eye socket then ran away. I also had a brief run-in with God, who preferred holding his laser rifle above his head with his mind rather than his hands. The Enclave soldiers inside fought rather well, took about 18 darts to kill 3 or 4 of them. That's not necessarily bad, just time consuming. Autumn didn't even give me a chance to end things diplomatic-like, someone had to pay for that. I considered making me the one who pays for it, but I decided to bore a hole in Sarah's skull with my darts, enter the code, save the day, and fail at beating Fallout 3 with only a dart gun. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.